All right, so here we have another smaller video. I mean, 10 minutes, I guess, isn't super small, but I just I like making smaller videos because I feel like if I just jam-pack them with just good quality info and they're not super long, more people will watch them and, and actually learn from them. So on this video, I'm just strictly going to cover trends. Um, I think a lot of people have pro problems drawing trend lines, and that's perfectly fine, but identifying what you're drawing is what's going to help you the most too. Um, you know, Identifying you know higher lows, you have your low, and then you have a higher low. You know, that means that's bullish. Uh, if you had vice versa, you know, you had a high here and then you had a lower high here, that's going to be more bearish. It's just probability. It's all you're doing is just narrowing down the probability. So here I have the KO chart. That's a daily, just five five different years um, from 2015 to 2019, uh, right at the cusp of uh, 2020, as you can see there, uh, before the big drop. But I just, this was a good example. I was going through a few. John Deere was another good one I could have done, but this was a pretty good example of what I wanted to cover. So when you draw trend lines, you want to draw from two very important points. So you look at this from two sides. You have your top and you have your bottom, and then the middle is your stock price. So <clears throat> a primary trend. A primary trend would be the overall direction of the entire of the entire screen. So let's just let's just cover this. So as we can all see, that's definitely a good uptrend line using three very important points. You got a bounce here. You got a good touch here almost, a good touch here almost, and a good touch here. And I'm not being exact. I'm just going over like a good picture of this. So you got a good trend line going up, right? So let's just remove this. Just so it's a little cleaner. So we got a reason for that, right? Now let's draw our highs. Okay, so we see what – let's just disregard – I mean I guess you can do that and make it a broadening channel. Um, but let's just, let's just go over this. So here we have – coca-cola over these five years right and we have our we have our bottom we got our top trend line now right so what do you have inside you know how do you how do you trade based off this well looking at it you see a bunch of same patterns right you see about it goes down up down up down up. now it's not always that easy you know to just look at it and be like down up down up down up but what is inside of this well secondary trend lines and this is what a lot of people really mix up with because people see retracements and they think sell off, you know, think, Oh God, it's all over again. But when you see selling, it's going to be more aggressive. It's always going to take longer to build up. That's just history. You know, that's just price history. It's going to take longer for price to build up than it does to break down. And you'll always see a spike in volume when you go down more than more so than if it, when it's going up the staircase up. So, but just on trends though, you got your primary trend. You got your you got your touches on the bottom. You got your touches on the top. So you got a good grip around the stock price now, right? So what do we have inside here? Well, there's a such thing as a secondary trend. So you see how we have this small retracement back down? Touches this, goes up. This is considered following the primary trend again. Once it goes up again, because the primary trend again is going up, right? Our primary trend is going up. Okay. So horrible arrow, by the way. Okay, still horrible. Let's try that one more time. Okay, good enough. So that's our secondary trend. Let's find another secondary trend. So this continued up, had some consolidation, went up, hit that, having a secondary trend again. Where did it break? Where did it break at before it bounced again? Right off of our primary trend again, going again. So we got one, we got one, two, and notice how in here. I'll, I'll go over that at the end actually. And then you see how here we have another, we have another drop, we have a pretty aggressive drop. Just like I said, the drops are going to be more aggressive. Pick up, consolidate, rejection, gap down. So you don't really have an awesome amount of secondary trend there. It's a little, you know, uglier because of the big gap down there, but that was earnings related. So that doesn't really help out. And then it comes back up and it continues to follow the trend. So now you have your primary trend and your secondary trend. Your secondary trend are going down which you have to have that for your primary trend to even exist. You're not just going to have, whoops, you're not just going to have a straight line up. That's just impossible. It's not going to happen like that. So what do you notice in between each secondary trend? What happens right after each secondary trend? Consolidation. Consolidation ha happens every time, which is why we cover that so much in the chef's zones uh, sector of the chat. So you have your primary trend going up, Secondary going down, you have consolidation. Consolidation is always needed for a bigger move, up or down. So even in a downtrending chart, I could have found this going vice versa. We're just covering an uptrend chart right now because it's just a really good picture on Coca-Cola here. So we're bullish on the overall direction for a long period of time. There is definitely pullbacks. This is what we've learned from the video. There's definitely pullbacks. 
and you have to have consolidation before movement. So what do we have here? Some pretty bullish consolidation there. Consolidation. I mean, look, and I'm cutting some of it out. I'm not doing that on purpose. I'm doing, I mean, I am doing it on purpose, but what I'm trying to cover is look how much price information is. We're on the daily. Look how many days are stuck in between that zone before this big move happened. Big move happened. Big move happened out of that after it caught support here. See, and this, this, if you have guide number four, this is what I, this is what I tried to cover a lot more was this, these trends, these primary, secondary, and tertiary trends. So I had somebody ask me, what is a tertiary trend the other day? And I didn't really want to just, you know, overload them. So I wanted to make this video and help cover it uh, for some people. So let's just, let's just highlight one of these channels. Let's highlight this one, right? So, well, before I do that, so we have our primary. These are our secondaries, right? These ones going down. I'm going to highlight this and we're going to look inside of this secondary trend. What do I have inside of this secondary trend? A bunch of the same thing. So you have move good, uh, going up, rejects, falls. So you have one, down. Two, down. Let's see, let's find a bigger move here. Three, down. Consolidation on our new, for, new newly formed trend line on that bigger time frame. Also, let me draw. Bounce. So these are tertiary trends. Uh, all these ups and downs you're seeing, these are tertiary trends. And they did the same thing as the bigger picture. You saw me go from the bigger picture and I zoomed in. So the only thing now we're at now is looking at inside of the smaller trend. So inside of the secondary trend, you have these tertiaries, right? This will be good for bounce plays. You know, this is good for, this is what day traders look at for whenever they're going for, you know, in between the weeks. When you're playing your pre-market levels, it's it's amazing. But it is always good the night before or the morning before the market opens, you know, all that good stuff beforehand, no matter what time, it is good to go through your bigger time frames. I haven't left the daily chart once yet. I'm still just going through the big time frame and I'm seeing amazing price action. You know, we're seeing really big moves happen out of these channels. So please go through some charts tonight and try and find a good chart just like this. You know, you can send it to my DMs. You can at me in chat, any of that good stuff uh, regarding this video. But please look at, look at that. We just broke it down every step of the way. We can even cover part of this really. I mean, you have, so you have your primary trend, right? Primary trend. So also one thing, this is actually a perfect example. I wanted to cover this. So if you're drawing a trend line, right? And your trend line's like, like you're going from here. That's a horrible trend line. You know why? It's not because where you grabbed it from. It's where you took it to. You know, this point doesn't really help us. That's current price. You know, you want to use price history to help you out. So you'd be grabbing from here. And your line that you want to catch is here. So I'm trying to catch these two points. You want to connect to multiple points that isn't current price. If it's around current price, cool. This just happens to be around current price. So I wanted to distinguish that difference before we go forward. Um, if you're using trend lines to be close to current price, it's not really helpful. Like if, if the second point, if this was just connected here and here, that's a horrible trend line because I'm having to use current price to do so. If you're using other levels, or other points of touch before it gets here, that's better. Current price bouncing on it right now. This makes me think Coca-Cola is about to, to, to make a bigger move up, head back towards 50. So that's why we break it down like that. And then, you know, you look above and you're like, oh, well, I see a pretty common resistance right here. See right here, the gap range starts. You could even mark right here because you have a rejection here, 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 here. So you have a good range here. It looks like the gap range from 48.60 to 52.12 is what's going to be filled when this bounces off this trend line for a one, two, three. I mean, you could even say four, five, six time. I mean, when it's not going to 100% accurate, but, you know, you can always draw your trend lines just like that. But you want to go from two points that are not current price. So I'm glad I distinguished that here at the end. I didn't realize that was a good example. So I'm glad I, I moved over and saw that. Uh, but this is the first step. And drawing these trend lines is the first step of breaking down a bigger time frame chart before you start going down the time frames. So now that I did all that work, I can go down to the four hour and I can go see, you know, what's happening there. I know for a fact that I have a common resistance like this. See, we have kind of like a, a rising wedge, sim like a pretty similar rising wedge. So this could break down, but we're going to be looking for this, uh, this gap fill. If the gap fill isn't the play, then we're going to be looking for a rejection off of this trend line. So that's why it's good to get your hands around the price history of the stock. So you have a good grip. Once you go down the time frames. you know, once I go down to here, go down to the hour, I now know like, Oh damn, price is really close to that. You know, this looks like it could be looking green again. 
So now I'm looking for levels that are close, like right here. Rejection, rejection, big move up, almost support catch, support catch. We're kind of right there now. So that looks like a good level to get calls from if it's going to hold this 4860. Good target, 4960. I mean, you could even break it down lower if you want. Mark this level, you know. Just going down the time frames and really going through what's going on with current price because you want to get good crucial levels but you don't want to just mark random levels and lines that just don't help you you want to mark things that are actually crucial to the chart you know have reasoning learning the reasoning is what's going to help you grow so i hope this video helped anyone if you want to drop me a a um a chart covering trends just like we did here uh, i'd be really glad to see this is why also why you guys see me check uh, average daily volume so much because you know, every day it's not like helping me. It's not making me think like, oh, the stock's going to explode tomorrow. No, no, no. It's helping me realize like once, like if we're, if I'm looking for a breakout, you know, for a long, over a long period of uh, time. Okay, so let's say I have a trend here, right? I just have a range. I'm going to be waiting for price to break this, right? Well, how do you have double confirmation without using an indicator that that's going to stay there? Accumulation and distribution. If I'm out of this and price is still accumulating with average, uh, with above average daily volume then I know that price is probably going to continue up to whatever next level I have left, you know, as a good target. That's why I like to cover it like that. So if this trends video helped you, please let me know at me in chat, drop me an example, DM me an example, any of that good stuff. I'm here to help here to give feedback. So I hope this helped you. I'll see you guys in the next one.